navigation. When I first heard about this, I thought, oh God, what a boring topic, navigation. You know, roboticists, they need to figure out how to get robots to navigate, who cares, blah, boring. But actually, navigation is one of the most really fun and successful areas in um, human cognitive neuroscience. So to get a feel for what it means, let's consider some of the incredible feats of animal navigation. So this is a monarch butterfly. It weighs about half a gram. Um, it's a beautiful thing, as you can see. Um, and this amazing animal flies over 2,000 miles from the US and Canada down to Mexico each fall. This tiny little half a gram animal. But even more amazingly, well, it can fly 50 miles in a, in a single day. That's pretty incredible. But most amazingly, it flies to a very specific forest in Mexico, shown right here. So there's this one little tiny forest. It's only a few acres. And monarchs from all over the US and Canada converge on that tiny little spot in Mexico of a few acres where they spend the winter. So think about how, how is that possible? But now here's the really amazing thing. They fly back north in the spring, but the they is different. It takes four generations to do one circuit. So the ones that leave Canada and Mexico uh, in, the, in the fall to come down here are different than the ones that fly back up north. And the guys that find this forest, this tiny little few acre forest, have never been there before. And in fact, their parents haven't been there and their grandparents haven't been there. It was their great grandparents who were last there. How the hell does that work? Okay, pretty amazing. Okay, now consider, this is a female loggerhead turtle, okay? So she uh, hatches from an egg on a beach in an island and goes out for 20 years swimming around the ocean seas, big, traveling over a very big distance. 20 years later, she comes back to the very same beach she was born on. How the hell is that possible? But there's a wrinkle. Sometimes those turtles don't land on exactly the beach they were born on. Sometimes they land on an island 20 miles away. So you might think, oh, that's not so great. They're not, you know, they can get in the ballpark, but it's not so great. But actually, if you look closely, it turns out that the beach that they land on that's 20 miles away is exactly the correct location for the Earth's magnetic field at the time they were born. But the Earth's magnetic field has shifted over the 20 years since they were born. And so that error reflects an incredibly precise coding of where the beach would have been 20 years ago. Okay, so this is a bat, and bats are incredible flyers. A typical bat will fly often 30 to 50 miles in a given night hunting for food, okay? That's pretty cool. But what's cool about, and they don't get lost. They come back to the cave, no problem. Like in the dark, no less. But what's really amazing is that when they fly into the cave, they do a backflip and land upside down on the, on the ceiling of the cave. And all the while, they do not lose their sense of direction. They're completely oriented, oriented. They know exactly where they are. And in the next lecture, we'll talk about some of the neurons in their brain that encode their precise orientation in the world and how those neurons switch online as the bat does the backflip and lands on the roof of the cage. Okay, we won't get to the single neurons in this lecture. That'll roll over to next time. Okay, so these incredible feats of animal navigation um, are necessary. The animals need to do this. Why? Because you need to roam around in your world to find food, to find mates, and to find shelter. Okay? And in each case, you need to find those things, and you need to know where home is and get back home. Okay, so this is not just esoteric animal biology. MIT students, too, need to be able to find food and mates and shelter. Okay?